guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Shushita Verma and today I'm back with another topic in fermentation process that is media and air sterilization. So let's get started. So if we talk about media and sterilization, then this sterilization process is the absolute necessity during any process and for fermentation it holds a really great significance, right? So there are a few points where we need to, to sterilize the process. First step is the sterility of media. Now the media components when we prepare the nutrient media, each and every constituent that goes into the media preparation has to be thoroughly sterilized and has to be you know free of contamination. Because once if any of the constituent is contaminated, in that case the whole nutrient media will get spoiled and the fermentation process goes in vain. So here the very basic and first step is that the media has to be properly sterilized and then there are a number of different number of methods by which we can achieve this sterilization process, right? Another important factor is the air, the air, whether it is the incoming air in the fermenter or the outgoing air. Both kinds of air has to be sterilized. They should, there should not be any contamination. They should be free from all the microbial load, right? Thirdly, sterility of bioreactor. Bioreactor is the basic fermenter which we are using in our fermentation process for the production of our desired product. And it is an essential step that it has to be sterilized so as to get the desired product free of contamination, right? And there are a number of ways for achieving this sterility of bioreactor. Like we can use heat treatment, we can use physical processes, we can use radiation. There are chemical treatments which we can do to get the bioreactor sterilized. Fourth is prevention of contamination. Like once all these steps have been done, once the whole sterilization process has been done, then the another very important factor is that we need to prevent further contamination because to be successful fermentation, to get a successful fermentation process, we need any product that has to be free of contamination. Because if the product has microorganism, then it, the desired result will not be attained. So there are few factors which we can say that we, we can divide into few factors and then discuss one by one that how each and every factor is being sterilized and how the process goes on, right? So first of all, I'm going to discuss about the sterility of media. So cultured media is the most important nutrient medium preparation on which the micro or, uh, on which our organism is actually uh, growing right on which our organism will grow and will produce the desired product right so there are a number of factors the number of methods where through which we can sterilize our culture media one method is heat treatment other method is physical like physical treatments like we can have filtration we can have filtration then there are few other methods like we can use chemicals and then we can use radiation but if we talk about media preparation then the chemicals and the radiations are very much uh, you know, used to a very lesser extent. Most reliable method for the media preparation, sorry, for the media sterilization is the heat treatment that is given. Now, there are few uh, places where we cannot use heat treatment. What are these? When we are using heat labile substances, supposedly I need to prepare a media which includes constituents which are actually sensitive to heat. The stability of the composition, uh, the stability of the nutrient might get disturbed due to the heat treatment given. So in that case, I'm going to use filtration, right? So where we use filtration? We use filtration in processes where we cannot use heat treatment due to the heat liability of the constituents, right? Most important is heat. I'm going to discuss about the heat treatment first. Now say, if we talk about the heat treatment, 
then most of the contamination where does it comes from most of the contamination of the media it comes from either from the vegetative cells or it comes from the spores right So now most of the contamination comes from either from the vegetative cells of the microorganisms or the spores. So vegetative cells are easy to destroy whereas the spores are very sturdy, they are difficult to destroy. So now to destroy these vegetative cells, what we can do is that we can destroy them or sterilize them at a lower temperature. Like if I subject them to 60 degrees Celsius, fine. And to a lesser duration of time, like 5 to 10 minutes, sorry, 5 to 10 minutes would do, fine, in case of vegetative cells. But in case of spores, because they are quite resistant and they are sturdy, difficult to break, difficult to destroy, in that case, I need to subject them to a very high temperature, like more than 80 degrees Celsius, right, and for... 15 to 20 minutes so here the temperature is also high and the duration of the time for which it is being subjected to heat is also high right it is also more so this is how the heat treatment it works in case of vegetative cells and in case of spores right another point in this is very important that there is an uh, bacteria bacillus stereothermophilus bacillus stereothermophilus the spores of this organism the spores of this organism are the spores of these organisms are the most heat resistant so if we want to check the efficacy or the effectivity of any sterilization process in the fermentation, right, during the fermentation process, if you want to test the efficacy of this steril sterility procedure, then these spores are being used. If the sterilization process is effective, is good enough, to destroy the spores of Bacillus stereothermophilus, then it is said that the sterilization process is successful, it is effective, right? In case we subject a particular media to sterilization and it is not able to destroy the spores of this Bacillus stereothermophilus, then the protocol has to be changed. Then it means that the sterilization process is not enough. Either we need to increase the temperature or we need to increase the time duration of the sterilization cycle. So in most at industry level, this the, there are you know there are strips of this bacillus stereothermophilus spores available in the market. You can just use these strips to verify that whether the sterilization is being done or not. If the spores are killed, it means the sterilization is perfect, it's done perfectly. If it is not, then it means that there has been some or the other problem during the sterilization cycle and that needs to be discussed, that needs to be taken care of, right? So this is how the heat treatment works. So now after heat treatment, there is another method that is filtration. As I've already told you that in case of the media constituents, where some of the constituents may be heat labile, they're sensitive to heat and might you know, their stability might get uh, compromised due to the heat treatment. In those cases, what we do is that we subject the media to the filtration technique. Now, there are components like vitamins, vitamins, blood and antibiotics and so many other components are also there which are actually heat level. In this case, these kind of uh, treatments, these kind of uh, constituents are subjected to the filtration. But with filtration, there are two limitations also. One thing is that filtration, it needs, you know, it needs to apply a high amount of pressure. And this high pressure is not suitable at the industry level. It's not that much possible. It's not that much feasible to give this kind of high pressure to so much quantity of the media, right? 
Another thing is that when you filter, so as you can see at in laboratory also, whenever we subject any substance to filtration, there is always a little bit of loss of that substance, right? But in case of media preparation, the amount of a particular nutrient plays a crucial role in the growth of the organism. So even if a little bit amount of media composite, uh, sorry, media component is being lost due to the filtration, it actually leaves a big influence on the growth of the organism. It actually affects the growth of the organism. So this is one drawback where we use filtration. That is the reason we prefer doing the heat treatment, right? There are few cases where both of the treatments can be combined, like the water can be filtered and the components which are actually heat stable can be subjected to heat treatment and then they can be mixed, right? I'm going to talk about batch fermentation here.